Hello, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, I have a lesson for you on how to solve two-step equations. So our objectives today are just that, that you will model solving two-step equations using algebra tiles, and you will solve two-step equations. The question I'd like you thinking about today, how can you use what you know about inverse operations to solve two-step equations? So today, we're going to apply what you already know. So first, we need to understand exactly what is a two-step equation. A two-step equation is an equation that takes two steps to solve. So up until now, unless you're watching this video for review, you've been solving equations that require one step. Either add a value to each side, or subtract a value to each side, multiply each side by value, or divide each side by value. Today, you're going to have to do two of those things to solve these equations. So here is a two-step equation. The big difference here that I hope you'll notice is that the coefficient of x is not 1, and it's being added by 3. So there are two things happening to our variable x. It's being added by 3 and multiplied by 2. So it's going to take two steps to undo those two things. Let's review what algebra tiles are. If you've watched a previous video of mine, you probably know, but let's make sure. So algebra tiles are used to represent variables and numbers, and they can be used to simplify algebraic expressions. So variable tiles can be, we have our long green, which equals an x, and then we have our long red, which represents a negative x, and then we have our constant tiles. We can have a yellow square, which represents the number 1, and a red square, which represents the value negative 1. Now let's try using them. We're going to solve our equation 2x plus 3 equals 7 using algebra tiles. So the first thing we need to do is we need to model this equation with our tiles. So let's start with 2x. That means we need 2 long green. That's our 2x, 1x and 2x. And now we need three positives, one, two, three. They're yellow to represent positive. And this line represents our equal sign on our work mat. And we're gonna add seven positives to the right. So now we have two x plus three equals seven. So now our goal is usually to get x alone. Now we're gonna get the two x alone first. So let's create our zero pair. If I add three negative tiles to the left side, this gives me a big zero pair. So if I add three, zero, three negative one tiles to the left side, I must also add three negative one to the right. So now here is a zero pair and a zero pair, and we know that we can remove the zero pairs. We have one, two, three zero pairs on the left, and one, two, three zero pairs on the right, and we can take those off of our workspace because they're equal to zero. So now I'm left with two green x's, so two x's and four ones. I'm going to turn my x's so that you can see. Let's group these. We want to make two different groups. This models division. So I'm going to line them up. I had four yellow tiles that represent four on the right and then two x's on the left so that you can see that one x is equal to two. So our first action that we did by adding negative three tiles to each side represented subtract three from each side. Now I'm showing you divide each side by two. So we're dividing this into two equal groups because I had two x's. So we now know that one x is equal to two. And that would check. If I plug this in for, two, for x, two times two is four plus three is seven. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video now and then go ahead and solve this equation using the algebra tiles, just like I modeled for you. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's check your work. So we are first going to model our equation. I need three X tiles, so three green long greens. I need four positive tiles, so four of the square yellow tiles. And then after my equal sign, I'm going to put another 7 over here. 
6, and 7. All right, now we're ready to solve. So I need to get these three x's all alone. I'm going to add four negative tiles to the left. And now I need to add four negative tiles to the right to keep the balance of my equation. And I can identify that I have four zero pairs on the left and four zero pairs on the right. So I can remove those from my workspace. And now I'm going to group. I have three x's and line them up. So one x is equal to one. Each x is equal to one, meaning the solution is x equals one. Let's check our work. If x was one, three times one is three, plus four is seven, and it checks. Now let's learn how to do it algebraically. So we're gonna learn the steps to solving a two-step equation. So as you might guess, there are two steps. So we're gonna use these following steps to solve algebraically. Step one, is to add or subtract to isolate the variable term. And step two is to multiply or divide to find the vari value of the variable. So the first thing you wanna do is get the variable term all alone and then look at the coefficient of x. Let's do a practice problem. So here's our equation that we're being asked to solve. So I'm gonna identify that this is my variable term. And I'm going to ask myself, what is happening to this term? It's being subtracted by 4. What's the inverse of subtract 4? That is to add 4. Whatever I do to the left side, I must also do to the right. So I'm going to add 4 to each side. That gives me a zero pair. So I'm left with 3x, and this 8 plus 4 is 12. Now I'm asking myself, what is happening to x? It's being multiplied by 3. The inverse of multiply by 3 is to divide by 3. So if I divide the left by 3, I must divide the right by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, leaving me x, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now our last thing to do is to check. We are going to replace x with 4. So 3x is 3 times x, and if x is equal to 4, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 subtract 4 is 8, and it checks, so our solution is x is equal to 4. Your turn. I would like to have you pause the video now, solve, don't forget to check, and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So now you have 2x minus 1 equals 13. We identify that our variable term is 2x, it's being subtracted by one. The inverse of that is to add one, and we must add one to both sides. So here is our zero pair, leaving me just two x, and 13 plus one is 14. So now I look to see what is happening to x. x is being multiplied by two. The inverse is to divide each side by two. So two divided by two is one, or one x, which is just x, and 14 divided by two, is 7. Now let's check our work. We're going to replace x with 7. So 2 times 7 subtract 1 needs to equal 13. 2 multiplied by 7 is 14. 14 subtract 1 is 13 and it checks. Our solution is x equals 7. Now let's look at solving a two-step equation that has fractions. We use the same steps. So here's our equation. We still are going to identify our variable term. It's being added by 7. The inverse of add 7 is to subtract 7 from each side. So 0 pair, and I'm left with 1 fifth x on the left, and 9 subtract 7 is 2. Now I'm being asked, I'm multiplying 1 fifth times x. The inverse of that would be to divide. But dividing by fractions gets messy with an equation. So I'm going to find a simpler solution. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. Because 5 is the reciprocal of 1 fifth. And that's what my goal is. My goal is to have a coefficient of 1. And any time I multiply a value by its reciprocal, I get 1. So 5 times 1 fifth and then 2 times 5 is a much easier problem than trying to divide by a fraction. So 5 times 1 fifth is 1 or 1x, one and 2 times 5 is 10. 
Now, let's check our solution. We're going to replace this x with 10. So 1 fifth times 10, that's 10 divided by 5 multiplied by 1, which is 2. 2 plus 7 is 9, and it checks. My solution is x equals 10. So remember, always think of a simpler way of solving. Rather than divide by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. Your turn. Please pause the video now, solve, check your solution, and come back to see the solution. Welcome back. So we're going to identify our variable term. It's being subtracted by 11. The inverse of subtract 11 is to add 11 to both sides. Here's our zero pair. So we're left with 2 thirds x on the left, and 15 plus 11 is 26. So we have a fraction here. Instead of dividing both sides, even though this is multiply by 2 thirds, I'm going to make a simpler problem. I'm not going to divide by 2 thirds. I'm going to multiply each side by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. 3 halves times 2 thirds is 1, or 1x. One and then over here, again, let's make it a simpler problem. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 13 times 3 is 39. There you have it. Now let's check. So we're going to replace x with 39. Remember, this is an easier problem than it looks. We're being asked to take 39 and multiply by 2 and divide by 3. I'm always going to divide first because it makes it a smaller number. 39 divided by 3 is 13. 13 times 2 is 26. 26 subtract 11 is 15. It checks. Our solution is x equals 39. Now let's look at solving with decimals. Again, same steps. So we identify our variable term, and it's being added by 2.9. So we're going to do the inverse and subtract 2.9 from each side. This is our zero pair. And now let's set this up. We have two different signs here. So we're going to take the larger absolute value and subtract the smaller. 9 subtract 7 is 2, and 2 subtract 1 is 1. Remembering that it is negative because the larger absolute value was negative. And we bring down our variable term. So now we identify that 0 0.4 times x, the inverse would be to divide both sides by 0 0.4. So let's divide 1.2 divided by 0 0.4, and we're going to remember that our solution will be negative. So we need to move our decimal point one space to the right for both. So now we have 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So don't forget that negative sign, x is equal to negative 3. Let's check ourselves. We're going to check by replacing x with negative 3. 0 0.4 times negative 3, we're going to multiply that so you can um, ignore the decimal to multiply. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and we need one decimal place, so that's negative 1.2. Add 2.9, we have two different signs here, so it's going to be 2.9 subtract 1.2, which is positive 1.7. It checks our solution is x is equal to negative 3. Now it's your turn. Please pause the video now, solve, don't forget to check your solution, and then come back. Welcome back. So there's our variable term, 3x, and it's being subtracted by 1.4. I'm going to do the inverse, and I'm going to add 1.4 to each side. When I do this, I'm left with 3x on the left, and then 14.2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 1 is 1. So we have 3x equals 15.6. We've eliminated our zero pair. The inverse of multiply by 3 is to divide each side by 3. So let's set up our long division here, 15.6 divided by 3. Since this is a whole number, I don't need to move the decimal point. I'm going to bring it straight up. 3 goes into 15 5 times perfectly. 3 goes into 6 2 times perfectly, or evenly. So x is equal to 5.2, but let's check our work. So to check, we're going to replace x with 5.2. 3 
times 5.2. You can ignore your decimal point and just multiply. And when you do that, you're going to get 156, and then you need one decimal point. Subtract 1.4 will give me 14.2. And it checks our solution is 5.2. So there you have it. Those are the steps to solving a two-step equation. So even though there's only two steps to solving, remember add or subtract first and then multiply or divide. Don't forget to check your solution. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.